Welcome, welcome, welcome to another OU Insider Under the Visor Sooners podcast. Um, special guest, I think you can see. An all-time Sooner great, obviously, a legend in Oklahoma world, uh, all-time coach, coach at Oklahoma. Kel, was it 20... How many years? 23? 20, 23, 23, 20, 23, 23 is a coach. Wow. 23 that's, years at Oklahoma. That's wild. Honestly, that's, Cal that's, Gundy's here. That That's long enough. You know, people are like, man, you need to, you need to come back. I'm like, no. I, that's, <laughs> I mean, listen, 23, not three years, not two years, but 23 years. So somebody else needs to do it now. Oh, man. I remember the first – well, first off, get plug where you're what you're doing now obviously with the sports animal kind of talk everybody what, what's going on there yeah you know I, I i started doing some radio here about a year ago um i always enjoyed talking on the radio i always enjoyed tv and i always thought someday i might want to do something like that um you know in our world a lot of football coaches probably a lot of coaches don't listen to talk radio sports mm-hmm. radio because they don't want to hear all the the nonsense uh but I've always been able to allow it in one ear and out the other. And because I just love sports and I just, you know, I I wanted to get in it because I wanted to feel like I had something to give back and I've got a different side of things. Um, You know, you, you drive around, listen to some people in sports animal. They don't know what they're talking about. They're they're They make up half of their crap. uh, And some people do do it, you know? So, Mm -hmm. but anyways, I'm, I'm with the sports animal WWLS 98.1, two days a week from Monday, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to two. There you go with Mark Rogers, obviously. Correct. That's right. He's, uh, he's, he's been a great legend. Yeah. He's, he's done tremendous. He has kind of held my hand and getting me going and getting my feet wet. That's very, very cool. Um, I, I I have to, I'm going to confirm this that Kel does listen to the radio and oh, yeah. he coached. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I do know that. Um, what you said wasn't hundred percent correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I I've had those sex a few them. times. <laughs> I, I never had it. I never had a problem, you know. No, you uh, didn't. <laughs> and I and I enjoy it. And, and I yeah. love my music, you know, but I mm-hmm. again I just rather get caught up on some sports that I haven't had a chance to whether watch ESPN or turn the turn the TV on or something, you know. So here I am. What's your sport of choice outside of college football? Oh my gosh, there's everything. I love. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Formula One. Um, you know, I'm Wrestling, a big, right? I'm a huge softball guy. Um, you know, I, I love the Olympics. Uh, obviously, I grew up playing baseball. You know, played baseball at OU. I've kind of gotten away a little bit from it because it's just kind of long. Uh, but uh, I mean, every Sunday morning, my wife and I are big in F1. And if you guys have not watched the Netflix Formula One, you need to get on there and watch it because it is so interesting um, what these companies do and, and the money that they raise for their cars. There's there's wow. 10 companies and there's you know two racers per each. But uh, anyways, a little bit. I, I love everything. I, I really, really do. And, um, you know, I, uh, I, I enjoy talking about a little bit of everything. Uh, there's some things I still struggle with. I still struggle with names, uh, especially when you get in the basketball world in the mm-hmm. NBA with some of the guys' names. Um, and I've also learned that, I, I mean, I've got huge respect for everybody that's that does the radio, does TV and does podcasts because it's not easy. I mean, I do it at nighttime, you know, the days before. I mean, I'll, I'll start, you know, researching two or three hours. I'm constantly – um, sending myself notes and um, interviews of people on my cell phone. And then I'll get up in the morning and I'll do stuff for about three hours. So I'm in a good spot. I do it two, maybe three times a week. I don't know if I could do it five times a week, man. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of work. It really, really is. So have you, you're big into the formula one and I don't know if this is the same thing. Have you watched grand the on Netflix, grand Turismo Turit? Torino, Turismo, the movie, the movie. I, I've watched the movie. Yes. Yeah. The, about the kid that came up through video games. Yes, yes, yes. I have, I have watched that. Um, it's a good it's movie. Been a while. It's a great movie. It's a really, really good movie. It's another good movie. People go in and watch. We don't need to get into detail with it, but that's a good movie <laughs> to go and watch. I, hey, I'm a huge movie guy now. So I, I love, I mean, I'm on Apple, on Netflix. I mean, I'm on, I've got text threads with my son, ton of his 
former coaches. I mean, I got guys on there from USC, from Texas, uh, from Florida, and I'm like, all That's right, awesome. give me something new to watch. Give me something new to watch, and I'll be binging things, you know. So, yeah, I know you guys are too busy. You guys, you guys stay at it pretty heavy. You don't have time to be watching too much. Uh, yeah, the, 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 I'm not going to lie. The kid part kind of does it for me. That is the, uh, they're always on the go. Um, and then obviously Parker's just now married. So he's, he's always on the go with that and work. So it's a little different. I, I, I envy you. I'm not going to lie. I envy yeah. you. <laughs> you know, I, you know, my son's 29, you know, KC's 29. And, and so the good thing is I still get to see him, you know, and yeah. obviously, you know, he's coaching at OSU now with my brother. So, uh, I, you know, I go up there about two or three days a week and sit in on meetings and watch practices and, um, you know, go back in and watch film with the guys and stuff. And so that's enjoyable. And then I got a daughter, our daughter lives out in Scottsdale. So all is good in our household. That's awesome. Well, you, you, you've, uh, you have more insight on Oklahoma football than everybody else, obviously in the media world without question. Um, Oklahoma going into the SEC, you've known about this for a long time. You were around when it got announced and it was being talked about and vetted and all that type of stuff. What was your instant reaction? I was excited. I mean, I, I, I wanted to do it for years, for two, three, four years before that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and probably because I've had so much history and I've, it was here for so long. I started in, you know, Bob hired me in December of 98. So I, you know, we, we got to where we were dominating this conference and the big 12 conference consistently and went in most of the championships and, and honestly just got tired of hearing about all the sec crap. And, and, and it's the, again, you got to pat them on the back. They, they, they're very good at what they do consistently mm -hmm. as a, as a group. And uh, I mean, we've had our opportunities in some games and some, you know, the BCS games and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I was excited, man. I was like, we need to go do something different. You know, let's, if, there, if, 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 if playing with the big boys is the SEC, then we are part of the big boys. We need to go to the SEC and uh, let's get it on. It's year three of the Brent Venables era at Oklahoma, Kale, and you've gotten the chance to be out on the practice field. Obviously you've seen these guys up close and personal as they prepare for the transition to the SEC. What do you think about this roster, where they're at, both in terms of the top-end talent that they have, the elite physical specimens, but also the depth? From, from a sheer roster amount of talent standpoint, how poised do you think Oklahoma is to be able to step into the SEC and compete with the big boys straight away? Well, I, I mean, I'm always going to believe that they're going to be able to compete and compete at the highest level. You know, it's just – it's it's getting used to having to do it every Saturday, um, mm -hmm. you know, having the opportunity to talk to a lot of coaches who have been in the big 12 and been in the big 10 and then go to the SEC, you know, it's like, okay, what's the biggest, what's the, what's the biggest thing that, how do you got to adapt? You know, they're just like, it's every Saturday. I mean, you, you don't have time to breathe. You know, it's, it's like they compare it to like, like boxing, like you're, you're fighting middle heavyweights in the big 12. And you can take a punch from somebody and get knocked down, but you can probably get back up. Well, in the SEC, you start to fight heavyweights, and everyone's a heavyweight. And at any given moment, somebody can throw a punch, and you may not get back up. Um, and so I, that kind of makes a lot of sense. It really does. Uh, I, I think OU is in a good position. I think they're heading in that direction. You know, we can all kind of speculate where we think they're going to be. We just don't really know until we get thrown in there and, and mm -hmm. have to deal with and have to deal with it. Um, uh, obviously, you know, you talk about the size um, and 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 the power of the offensive lines and the defensive lines, and and those guys are they're so much bigger. I, I mean, I I can remember games that we played Georgias and, and the LSU's and the Alabamas and people like that and. You know, years ago when I was coaching running backs, I can remember, you know, I was on the sidelines the first 16 years, and I can remember safeties coming downhill and hitting my running backs, and I'd be like, holy cow, I didn't see anybody hit like that all year long. Um, yeah. So it, it is different. Um, I think we have the right mindset. We have everything it takes to be successful. It's, it's just consistently trying to keep people healthy and getting your offensive line and your defensive line up to par where it needs to be 
in my opinion, is the most important factor. You were on kind of the very beginning of the NIL. And then you got out. I remember the con- yeah. first conversation with her. when you got out, the very first conversation you and I had just, you were relieved. <laughs> it's oh, just yeah. really like, Oh God, I don't have to deal with that. Like, it's yeah. just, it's a nightmare. You were, you told right. me, um, but you've also know enough coaches and been around the program enough to see where it's transitioned from when you were there to now, where do you think Oklahoma is in their NIL handling compared to when you were there to now? Like, do you, do you, have you seen a, a difference, I guess? Well, I, I've seen it from the outside. Um, yeah. And I, I think they've, you know, realized that, I mean, it, it, if, if you're not involved in the NIL, you have no chance to be successful, uh, per, period, mm-hmm. on in, in any conference. But, I mean, you're going to have to pay. It, it, there's no way around. It's like having a quarterback. If you don't have a quarterback on any level, you can't win football games. You can't do it. And so um, – I, I think they realize that, and not, not that they never didn't realize it, but it is a, a serious deal. And here's the deal, is with this NIL world, anybody can be good now. Anybody. I mean, e- every school has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, alumni that are millionaires, multimillionaires, probably even some billionaires. And it doesn't take much for, you know, couple of guys sitting around on a, their back patio on a Saturday night, drinking some wine, smoking a cigar that are multimillionaires or maybe even a billionaire and say, you know what? I'm tired of getting our butts kicked. Let's give these guys $20 million. Let's go out and buy some offensive linemen. Let's go out and buy us a quarterback. Let's go out and buy us a defensive tackle. And that's the world that, that you're in. So if you're not getting involved in it, you just cannot sustain. You cannot fight the fight. Um, and I mean, look what it's done just locally with some people around here with the old misses in Missouri's, you know, for example, I mean, it, it's what it's done is it put them in the top 10 this year. They're not, a, you know, they're not a top 10 football program consistently. They never have been, but they've gone out and, and bought them some big time players, which is perfectly legal. Everybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And all of a sudden they get kind of thrown in the top 10. Now, are they truly a top 10 team? We will see. But if, you, if, if you're not finding a way to pay your players and take care of them, um, you're going to have a hard time sustaining any, any type of success. And, 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 and it needs to be structured somehow. I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's just kind of a mess right now. Um, you know, but I think, it's, I think it needs to be like, like, like structured out to where, okay, all, if you're all freshmen, you, you, as soon as you walk in the door, you get this amount of money, okay? If you're a first-year starter, you get uh, this amount of money. If you don't start your first year, you get this amount of money. You know, if you're a two-year starter, you get this amount of money. If you're an all-conference player, you get a $50,000 bonus. If you're a second team, you get $25,000. Um, but, man, I don't know. It's, it is very challenging, and it, and it is a mess. I know that. You, you you talked about Missouri and Old Miss and just they're they're like Johnny come lately's right like it's, yeah it's, it's it's very very SMU kind of the eighties right the Pony Express type deal that's going on because of NIL but it's legal this time around right and, and it's and SMU's got a couple of players here recently they have and they're they're doing the same thing it's almost like they've yeah. done this before and they've um, got a lot of they've got a lot of money down there <laughs> they do they're the richest problem might be the richest college in the united states outside the ivy leagues um but i you you said something that interests me about we'll find out if they're top 10 or they're this or that because they're not historically a top 10 program is there a difference now in your opinion between what nil can do and get you the talent it can do everything it can help you win 11 games like Missouri did. Right. And, and Ole Miss did last year, but to sustain it, like can sustainability be bought or does it have to be culture? You've been on both sides of media in the, the coaching side, but real, like, can it be bought or does, is it full culture in your opinion? Well, I, I mean, I think a little bit of both, but we're going to find out 
I mean, they're, they're two great examples of programs that we're going to find out how good are these guys really are, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And, and just the transfer portal and all that itself, you know, um, I, I would struggle with it probably if I was coaching now, because Brandon, you know, me, my, my, me as a coach, I was all about always about recruiting and relationships Mm -hmm. and I developed relationships as soon as I found a kid, whether he's a freshman or sophomore, and it was his parents and his grandparents, his aunts and his uncles, his coaches. And, and still to this day, I can go through my phone. I can thumb through here. I can call guys from 2004, 2006, 2003, and they'll answer the phone because I have great relationships with them. It's hard. I, I would probably struggle a little bit to try to have those great relationships when guys are just kind of coming in and out. Um, right. You know, and you, you don't really know a ton about a guy, you know, you, you, you get into, you know, after the season and you watch a guy in the portal and, you know, then you take it to the offense coordinator or defense coordinator. Then you take the head coach. Yeah, he's good. Let's bring him on a visit. Let's offer him. Uh, and then he commits on Sunday and you, you know, you don't really know him. You don't know mm-hmm. that much about him. You can't call the college coach where he came from. That coach don't want to talk to you. You know, so what do you do? You call the high school coach. That's what everybody says. Well, what's the high school coach going to say? Oh, he's, he's a great player. He's a great kid, a hard worker, and trust him, this and that. I mean, they all say that, you know, so. Um, but we're going to find out if, if you can sustain. Can you get these players in your program in, in just in the January and um, get them on your team and them to uh, bond with everybody and become leaders and help you win a championship within 12 months, you know, yeah. that's the million dollar question. And, and, and we'll see, you know, so I, I don't know. I just, I've got a huge question mark when it comes to old misses and Missouri's and people like that. I still got a huge question mark about the university of Texas. Uh, now, most people out there, they don't, they think that they're coming. You go to SEC mm-hmm. media days, like I did, they're coming. Everybody in there says they are coming. And I'm like, Okay, so Steve Sarkeesian's only won 10 games one, one season as a head coach. That was this past season. So I, I want to see some consistency. I want to see it. You know, they lost 11 players in the NFL. That's a ton of players. You know, they lost two. They lost great defensive linemen, wide receivers. They lost running back. I mean, you got to reload. That That's 11 guys in the NFL, I mean, to replace. 2004 I Oklahoma. All over again, 2005 for you, right? Yeah, Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, so I want to see some of these people um, do it on a consistent basis, like what we've been doing, like the University of Oklahoma. And I always say we, but I'm not in anymore. But like like the Oklahoma Sooners have done for 100 years, um, that that's what makes somebody great. And you, you, you speak of reloading there, Kale, and I think one of the things that this fan base is so excited about is looking at the way that Coach Venables and this staff have been able to reload via the recruiting trail as well as via the portal over the last couple of seasons. But uh, with, su- with how ready some of these 2024 signees, these true freshmen look, I think there's a lot of belief that there are many – many players from that class that can contribute something, maybe not a ton, but contribute something immediately, even as this program transitions to the SEC. Have there been any moments for you uh, being out on the practice field this August where you, maybe you know a guy's name, but you don't know his number yet. You see guys running out there on the field and you don't quite know who's who yet. Cause it's a process for all of yeah. us, right? Have there been any, any of those newcomers that have caught your eye or produced a moment or a play where you can't kind of help but turn your head and go, Oh man, who's that? Well, I, I, um, uh, th- there's a bunch of them. I mean, th- they've gotten, especially defensively, they've gotten a lot more depth over there. Um, they, they, um, uh, they always have team speed on the defensive side. They're going to play hard. They're going to run. They're going to chase the ball, do all that stuff they got a lot better looking younger guys that are walking in the door because nowadays these guys are so specialized in just putting all their time and efforts in one sport and they have trainers. Um, That's why you see quarterbacks. In my opinion, there's more better quarterbacks, better quarterback play all throughout the country, you know, go through the SEC and just go through and look at all these quarterbacks. They're all pretty damn good. I mean, Mm. they're all, everybody's got a good quarterback. Go, Go look in the big 12, you know, I mean, everybody's got a quarterback. You know, uh, why is that? Because 
just like your son, Brandon, he's in seven on seven and he's in seventh grade, you know, yeah. and they're, they're doing it nine months out of the year. So these, these guys are, are getting better and they're showing up better. Um, I was really impressed with, uh, I'll tell you right now, Xavier Robinson. That's his name, right? The running back. That's right. Um, Carl Albert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched him a little bit in high school, but mainly on tape and film. Um, thought he was just a, a bigger back that was just more dominant than everybody. And I think he's, when I saw him out here on practice, he's trimmed down. He looked like he's lost 10 or 15 pounds. Um, very smart. And I always kind of thought that he was probably going to be like an H back or maybe an outside linebacker. I just didn't know if he was going to have the skill set to be a, a tailback, but he has the things that you need. I mean, he, he runs with good pad level. He's physical. He's got good hands. He's very smart. He can pass protect. Um, I'm not saying he's going to win the dope walker, but he kind of just like, wow, I didn't know he was going to be that good. Um, yeah. You know, there's you, you look at Michael Hawkins, the young quarterback, um, very, very talented. You know, I, I recruited his dad. <laughs> I recruited his dad from RL tournament. I'm very close with Mike. Um, he has trained his son. He has uh, groomed him. Um, Kevin Murray, Kyler's dad, has trained him hmm. to be a quarterback. And he, he has the skills like his dad. He's fast. He's quick. He's got, a, he's got great arm strength, a quick release. I mean, he has a chance. I mean, I saw it in spring ball. I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, this cat's got a chance to be a dude, you know? Um, uh, so, and, and then, you know, um, the, the running back from Longview, T Taylor Tatum. I mean, he's, of course, when you're ranked the number one or two running back in the country in high school, people typically don't miss on those accolades, and he is, you know, and he's a – Great kid. He's an East Texas kid. We've recruited a ton of East Texas players. Uh, a lot of talented uh, players. He's kind of – he could potentially could be could be that guy, you know. And then you got your your young lineman. It looks like defense lineman. It looks like Jaden Jackson. I mean, I, I, I keep hearing talk everywhere that don't be shocked. The first team runs out on the field, you're going to see Jaden Jackson as yeah. one of those two defensive tackles. That is impressive. That is impressive. There ain't very many – Defensive tackles running on that field as a first-year player at the University of Oklahoma. No, I, I so on offense you brought up Michael Hawkins. Um, you brought up Xavier Robinson. Is that offensive line? It Bill Beanbo is the best. We all know that. Like he's, it doesn't matter who he throws out there. They're going to be at least serviceable because that's what he does. Um, but they're dinged up obviously and we've we've discussed that at nausea everybody has for a while even even venables has been like look we got guys banged up it is what it is right now but there let's let's throw it out there game one they're healthy they're back okay uh everybody's playing and we'll 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 go there um can they be better than above average in your opinion uh that's a question mark for me i i i mean i i don't yeah. know that I, I don't know that. Um, I, I I don't know that. And again, like you said, I mean, Bill is one of the best coaches that's out there in all of college football. It's not the yeah. best. Um, he's going to have them in the right position. He's going to have them. They're going to know who they got to block. They're going to know where they got to be. Uh, the question is, are they good enough to play week in and week out in this league? And to me, it, that will surprise me if they can do that. Um, I'm, I'm, my concern, I've got some concerns there at that position. Um, but there's ways offensively to, as you know, as a play caller, they've got now they got skilled dudes. They got running backs everywhere. They got receivers all over the place. If if guys can get healthy, they've got a bunch of different ways to. Um, offensively to move the ball up and down the field. You've got a very young, talented quarterback who can run and he's got a strong arm, you know, but again, it's going to come up to those guys up front. And to me, mm -hmm. I just, I'm, that's the one position on that side of the ball that I, I question it, it. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to be as good as that offensive line this year in the SEC. 
if 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 they were still in the Big Twelve, maybe not worry about it as much. But in this league, in the schedule they have, it's going to be a challenge. Now I want to follow in up. my opinion. In my opinion, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to follow up there on Coach Biedenboe because as we sit here today, Oklahoma is very much on the precipice, assuming nothing takes a left turn, of landing what would arguably be their most impactful offensive line acquisition via the high school route in the modern recruiting era. That, of course, being five-star offensive tackle Michael Fasusi from Louisville. And this fan base doesn't often get to see the human side of Bill Beatonbow. He has maybe one media availability every couple of years, and that's the only time they ever actually hear from he Bill Beatonbow, the person. And I know he, he likes that. that. <laughs> I know he likes that. But what is it about Bill that makes him an effective coach? As somebody that worked with him for as long as you did, what is it about who he is that makes him good at what he does? I mean, the number one word that I, I like to use in all these situations is he's passionate. I mean, he is, he's just very passionate about making his, uh, holding himself accountable and holding his players accountable and, and, and to also holding them to the team, uh, being, being accountable. And he's just, you know, he's, he's very, very smart. He's very, I mean, he's got a, a great memory. He's, he, he knows the game. He knows it in, in and out. And uh, he's just very passionate at what he does. He don't really care about what goes on on the outside. You know, he's like that horse running down. He's got those blinders on. He don't, he don't, he don't care what goes on out there at the slot position or the outside receiver. He's just worried about his five dudes. And um, he is, um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a get, big get for them um, if they can get that that uh, five star guy, which it kind of looks like that they're going to. And and uh, you got to have the right guys in there. You got that coach, so you need to have. To be successful in the SEC, you got to have you got to have SEC talented players. Mm -hmm. Is what you got to have, and um, you know the tr transfer portal is a, a tough place because you could go out and, and and get guys from Washington and Michigan State, but then all of a sudden they get here and they're like, I mean, these guys don't even look like they've looked at any weights. I mean, what 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 in the hell they've been doing? Where they came from? You know, so that's the tough thing with the transfer world is. Just because you get a guy who is a starter somewhere else in another conference doesn't mean he's going to come here and all of a sudden be a great player for the University yeah. of Oklahoma, you know. So it's good you can get them young ones. I know they recruited well. It, it seems that they recruited some good players in the 24 class. So hopefully that's a good foundation that he has. He, he's got a, a pretty good production rate of turning guys over and, and uh, having a chance to go play in the NFL. I think we would totally miss the boat if we didn't talk wide receivers with you. Um, you, obviously you coach running backs for years and you, I think coach the greatest running backs in the last 20, 30 years at the university of Oklahoma. I think without question, you brought those guys in. I don't think that's even debatable. Um, and one of them is the running back coach at the university of Oklahoma now. Um, but you've also brought in some amazing wide receivers over the years too, through recruiting and obviously development, a lot of those guys are still on campus in Norman. And that unit is viewed as the strength of the offense, like just the strength of the offense. What is it about, I guess, Nick Anderson and Jalil Farouk and those types that you see that makes them have the potential to be one of, if not the best unit in the SEC this year? Well, they've got a lot of depth, and 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 I mean, Emmett Jones has done an unbelievable job. Yes. job. I mean, he is he is he has done a tremendous job in recruiting at a probably at an overall high, maybe the highest level of all the coaches up there in the last two years. You yeah. know, cons consistently, and uh, not only just getting guys that are you know within two or three hours, you know. I mean, he's he's going far away and getting those guys. So he's done a he's done a tremendous job. You know, Nick Anderson. Obviously, I coached his brother Rodney, um, and it, you know, I'm I'm a huge Anderson uh, fan. I, I love the mom and dad and um, Rod and Joby and 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 Rodney and man, Rodney. When Rodney played for me, when Rodney when I recruited him out of uh, 
um, Katy, Texas, he would run through a wall for you. And he wouldn't even mm -hmm. ask anything. If you asked him to do it because he believed you, I mean, he was he would give you max max uh, effort and uh, he, he would do that. And that's the way he was. You know, his career kind of got chopped up a little bit because of all the injuries. I mean, there's no reason why he couldn't be right now, uh, you know, be in the NFL for seven years or eight years and be a great, great running back because he had all the tools. Well, his brother has everything, the same mindset. Obviously, he's built different, tall, lanky. Um, and his better days were, in my opinion, were always going to be ahead of him coming out of Katie because, you know, they only threw the ball five times. <laughs> you know, they, you know, they didn't need to. They're going to score, score 50 points and have 450 yards rushing in the game. So um, I felt like he was going to have the opportunity to get coached better and, and continue to have more reps. If he can just stay healthy, he has everything. And um, he, he, so very high on him. And obviously, you know, J Jaleel – Love Jaleel. Every time you see him, he's going to have a big smile on his face. Um, you know, obviously came here with Caleb Williams. And yeah. uh, it was – I can remember through that process uh, when that went down, when Coach Riley left, I can remember getting on the phone with Jaleel's mom and dad. And um, they were like, Coach, you don't have to worry about it. Jaleel mm -hmm. ain't going nowhere. He loves that place. And you know what? That's cool because very easily a guy – halfway across the country could have said, you know what, I'm going I'm to go to Maryland. I'm going to go to Virginia Tech. Or I'm going to go back to Penn State. I'm going to go back and get back home. But, you know, he loved the University of Oklahoma and loved his teammates. But, the, the, you know, OU's got guys all over the place. Brennan, I recruited him. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we kind of had to let him go because of some situations that we already had with some people. And then it was an easy fix whenever he wanted to leave Texas to come back here at OU. And so – they got guys everywhere, um, you know, J.J. Hester, if he can stay healthy, um, big, tall guy from Missouri. Um, and then they got a lot of young guys, you know. They got the fast guy out of Georgia, uh, Raggins of Zion. Raggins, yeah, Raggins, Raggins, yep. Yeah, I know he's been a little nicked up a little bit. So here's the deal. You can only throw 11 of them out there at a time, <laughs> you know. And, and I will tell you this, if they pass that rule to 105 scholarships, only it's going to it's going to be a, an absolute mess because what's going to happen is you're going to get a few more better players but there's going to be more players standing on the sideline so you're going to have more players that are jumping in the transfer portal uh every year uh if mm -hmm. they move to this 105 which it looks like they're going to probably next spring it's crazy what so real quickly um we were talking off air and I, we can get into another day into the, the 105 yeah. when it actually gets into reality because I had a conversation with somebody on our board and I said, look, OU's probably only going to take two safeties in 26. You're like, why? They're going to move it to 105. Why wouldn't you take more? And I'm like, dude, you still have numbers and you don't want to overlook. You got preferred walk-ons. You have all this other stuff you still have to account for because apparently they're still going to allow preferred walk-ons. So you're going to want to move some of the preferred walk-ons that were – on that aren't on scholarship that you like on scholarship. And, you know, there's just, it's just, yeah. it's a, it's a, like you said, it's a mess that could potentially happen there. But the other, the, the last thing is, and it's a big deal right now, obviously, because people are bringing it back up and we talked about it off air that Colin Cowherd comment mm -hmm. over, Oh, use the next Nebraska. They don't have a recruiting base. They don't have this. They don't have that. Uh, they're moving to the SEC. This is going to happen, and that's going to happen. I know you disagree with it, but can you put it into words for fans why that you would never be worried about Oklahoma having that big of a drop again? No, I, I mean, first of all, it, it still blows me away a little bit. Nebraska still has never rebounded. But, mm. I mean, there's a huge difference when you look at where OU is and where they're situated, situated in this country – and you got Dallas two and a half hours out the, down the road, and you know the state of Texas. Everywhere the state of Texas is considered the backyard for for the University of Oklahoma, and has been forever. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just so easy for those guys to come to 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 come to OU. Now, you know it, it was it was a ch challenge in several years ago, um, you know, because more guys started to leave Texas and go to the SEC. You know, 
But now they don't have to. Now they don't have to travel as far. Now their parents don't have to send them to Georgia's and Florida's or uh, wherever. I mean, they can just go right up the road, jump on I-35 and go straight up the road. So Oklahoma is in a great position. And the other thing, Brandon, in my opinion, is if you draw a line right down the middle of the state to I-35 from Mexico all the way up to, to Canada, the best school, in my opinion, from I-35 West, besides Oregon, is Oklahoma. Um, so mm -hmm. if there's any good players in the whole western half of the United States that want to come play in the best conference in America, if they want to come to the SEC, I mean, why why do you want to, you know, travel 3,000 miles when you can just travel 1,100 miles and stop at Oklahoma now? Yeah. So I, I think – there, you're going to see potentially some success in off the West Coast, some players from the Californias, uh, possibly a few from Arizona uh, that want to play in the SEC um, show up at Oklahoma. Very interesting. Well, Kel, I know you got plans. You got to practice. You got to go watch. So yeah. uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come on here with us. Uh, Kel, Kel Gundy, all-time great Sooner, all-time great quarterback. I mean, held the records forever, obviously. And one of the longest tenured coaches in Oklahoma history as an assistant. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I appreciate it. I like listening to you guys. You guys are uh, do, do a tremendous job. So look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank Thanks, you, Kel. Kel. All right, see you guys. This episode of the OU Insider Under the Visor podcast is brought to you by Mando. No matter what activities are on the docket for you this fall, Mando's whole body deodorant will be your best friend. Mando is clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours. It's safe for the whole body. It stops odor before it starts, and it's American-made and available in four cologne-quality scents. Bourbon Leather, Mount Fuji, Pro Sport, and Clover Woods. Bourbon leather is a personal favorite for Brandon and I. Their handy travel-sized body wash in the bourbon leather scent goes with us wherever we go on the road as we cover OU football and recruiting. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, as well as free shipping. Luckily, we have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you use code INSIDER at shopmando.com. That's code INSIDER at S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. We also remind you to download the Autograph app where you can access all of our content from OUinsider.com as well as much more content from across the Oklahoma community and earn rewards for your fandom. Click link.ag.fan slash boomer and use promo code boomer to get started for free. Again, thank you to Kel Gundy uh, for joining Parker and I on this version of the OU Insider under the Visor Sooners podcast. If you're not a member of OU Insider, 60% off right now. Look, we were able to talk rivals into doing this again. They decided they were going to do it company-wide this time because there was such success with our uh, promo last week. Uh, but $39 gets you OU Insider for a whole year. $39. It's originally usually around a hundred dollars, like literally five cents under a hundred dollars. So $61 off the regular price, $39 gets you a whole year. You sign up today. You'll get it all the way through August, whatever of 2025, which means you'll get the whole season. You'll get a national signing day. You'll get the party at the palace. You'll get the champion barbecue. You get all spring football. You'll get basketball. You'll get softball. You'll get baseball. You'll get fall camp. And you'll get everything in between all the junior days, everything, the bowl games, the playoffs potential, the SEC season. It's Parker, it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, so sign up right now using promo code KICKOFF2024, all caps, one word, KICKOFF2024. Also, if you're a college student, email us, OUinsider at Rivals.com. OU Insider at Rivals.com. We will send you a promo code for you to get OU Insider even cheaper than that $39. But you have to have a .edu email and emails from a .edu uh, to be able to do that. Uh, we will give it to you for $11.95, less than a dollar a month, essentially. 
Again, worth it. A little over $3 if you want to do the kickoff 2024 a month. Uh, $39 will get you a whole year. Or you can email us if you have a .edu and you're in college, no matter what college you go to, no matter what college. Uh, and we will send you an email uh, for that promo code. But you got to email us at OUinsider at Rivals.com. All right, Parker, big news, potentially, potentially coming over this week. OU's in a good spot, good standing with five-star offensive tackle Michael Fasusi. It's a little around, we're recording around 24 hours exactly before he is set to announce. How you feeling, brother? I still what feel What if he good. pulls How an you... Oregon hat? Oh, my God. Uh, Peyton Bowen. Uh, you're, yeah, you're no, I'd look. There's no reason why this shouldn't go Oklahoma's way. I say that, Brandon, and the reality is we've been burned, and OU has been burned so many Correct. times before in these five star recruitments, which makes it it makes it tough to fully believe, fully wrap your head around until you see Michael Fasusi don the crimson cap and become an Oklahoma Sooner unofficially. On Wednesday mm -hmm. afternoon, that's what we expect will happen. That's kind of the industry consensus on what will happen. OU does appear to be in the best spot there. Now you just it, 3 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon can't get here soon enough because you want to know that it's done. Yeah, it, it look if things do go awry, it'll be it won't be the first time that I drive down to a five star announcement and that crap happens when they're happy all but Oklahoma's <laughs> yeah we don't we don't even need to explore the depths of the parallelism there <laughs> it's just... trust me it was brutal um but anyways yeah I, again I still like Oklahoma I see that there have been other national guys that threw in picks this morning for Oklahoma regarding Michael Fasusi so that's usually pretty good when that person throws it in there um, because he's not going to do it unless he has substantial evidence that it's leaning that direction. Uh, I, I will be at their practice at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Yay for me on that one. Good old 5 a.m. Wake up call. Can enjoy that in the hotel. Um, but I'll get to see Fasusi before the announcement and then after the announcement. Obviously, we will also uh be down there for coverage uh we're working on some other things for you guys regarding this coverage parker uh so be sure you're tuned in there's obviously a youtube live tomorrow so we'll see how all this plays out we'll see how all this plays out it's gonna um, be a big day of content yeah you say tomorrow yeah. this is dropping on a wednesday morning so yeah it's... yeah i guess so i guess yeah today today i guess this is dropping on a wednesday morning so I always forget that we're recording the day before. But yes, there is a live tonight. So if you're listening, uh, 8 p.m., be sure you're back on 830. this channel. 830, 830 p.m., excuse me, 830 p.m. Be sure you're back on this YouTube channel. Uh, or if you're listening to us on the audio version, be sure you're on our YouTube channel. You will get the audio version, obviously, on our podcast forums as well. But... Um, if you want to see the live, if you want to get some questions in, that's the time to do it. We will answer it much like we did our space last night, which was a super success, by the way. Um, lots of people liked it. Um, it was very much thanked from several people that DM'd, uh, us. And so, uh, we might, that might be another thing that we venture down the road with you guys as well. Uh, just, to, we like being one with the fans, Parker. I think that's more so just accessible accessibility is the best ability so um i did we, the 26 class rankings dropped also they did yesterday if you're listening to us on a wednesday today because we're recording it today um what was your thoughts on some of it outside of mason james yeah my my first thought is where the hell is mason james and then goodness Deacon gracious Schmidt, yeah i know you've got a problem with both of those rankings oh man if you want to dive into that go to our youtube channel marshall levinson dive, dives exactly into all that stuff on our ou insider recruiting blitz it's another video but yeah parker um outside of that 
which I totally agree with you on both those guys. Um, was there anything else that was like glaring to you? Not particularly. Um, Jake I think Crowley. Taj Taj Overton being the only representative of the state of Oklahoma in the Rivals 250 is indicative well, Colton, that Colton Yarbrough. Oh, was Colton Yarbrough in there? Yeah, he I just dropped have, down. I must have missed there. that. Yeah, he was just dropped. But yeah, over 10 Yarbrough. I mean, that right there is indicative of the reality that in terms of depth of talent, there is a drop mm-hmm. off from 2025 to 2026 in the state of Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. It may be a while before we see a class that is as deep as 2025. 2027 yeah. has potential. Yeah. There are some guys that are going to have to be uh, late risers, I think, or. Mm-hmm guys that uh, develop into legit p5 prospects for it to truly rival what the 25 class is in the state of oklahoma but yeah i really really like mason james for my money i think he is the top prospect in the state of oklahoma all respect to taj overton and Caden jones and Colton Yarbrough and all the dudes out there uh, Bryce and Brown, that yeah. earned national rankings Bryson Brown's a 27 Oh yeah, um, he is a twenty-seven, isn't he? Why yeah. do I always think he's twenty-six for some odd reason? I uh, I mean he he looks like he could be a twenty-six physically, yeah. but yeah, he's yeah, got the I, I, I love Mason James. Uh, he's going to be one of the first stops I make when we get back out on the road for this fall to start covering OU commits and targets on Thursday nights and Friday nights throughout their respective high school seasons. Uh, going to make an effort to get out and see Mason James on multiple occasions because. The rest of the known world needs to get acquainted with the dynamic wide receiver talent that Norman North possesses. Absolutely. I, he is a super, super, superstar. Um, I I think the the game that I'm most looking forward to over the next two weeks, 100%, is Little Rock Park View at Melissa. How Without often do you question. get a two-for-one? You get two OU commits playing each other, and they're from different states. Like Amazing. It happens a lot. It happens actually pretty frequently on the Texas high school football circuit Mm -hmm. where you end up with one OU commit playing another OU commit. But the fact that you have a school in Texas playing a school in Arkansas, and both schools just so happen to have a guy and a good one at that that's committed to the University of Oklahoma, that works out well. It works out very well. Um, I will. It will be obviously what the number thirty-two overall player, the thirty-five 34. overall player, thirty-four overall player in the country in the twenty twenty-five class. And Amarian Robinson, obviously, he's a safety commit. He's right on the cusp of five-star uh, with rivals two fifty, and then Owen Hollenbeck, who I think will at some point get his fourth star. If I was a betting man. Um, for Melissa. So that's going to be fun. Owen Hollenbeck's fun to watch just because he is a, just a rogue grader. Yep. He, he's got some big and strong and yeah. Bulky. So yeah, he's a rogue grader. So he's going to, it's, it's, it's going to be a really good time to go do that. Plus the facility at Melissa is just amazing. So it truly um, is. I, I'm excited for this high school football season, Parker. I know you have, we've been talking about how we're going to do that. You've kind of got your stuff tentatively laid out. I'm working on mine and we're going to kind of work off each other like we always do every year. And it's going to be fun. There's a lot to, uh, to like, particularly with the 25 class and the state of Oklahoma being so good. And then you got Taj Overton coming up. You've got obviously Mason James and the rest of the group in the 27 class. And Oklahoma's already starting to really dial in on a few of those 27 guys. I know that for a fact mm. that they've been really hitting the, the film to see who they're going to go out and see um, once they are able to do so in the 2027 ranks of OK preps and 28. So it's going to be really fun to not just do in-state, but out of state. And then we'll get a couple where you're going to be going to Shreveport to see Peyton Houston. I'll be heading out to Georgia and Florida to see a couple of OU commits. So it's going to be a good time this fall and we'll have all that coverage for you on OU insider VIP. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this version of the OU Insider Under the Visor Sooners podcast. Once again, want to thank Kel Gundy. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoy that. We want to do more of, of stuff like that, bring you guys content uh, like that when we were when we were available to do so. And this was kind of a downtime where it felt right 
to bring Cal on in between the season, starting up fall camp ending. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Again, 60% off right now, OU Insider VIP. Promo code KICKOFF2024. It's all one word. It's all capped. KICKOFF2024. $39, a little more than $3 a month, will get you one year of OU Insider VIP. We had several hundred sign up last week. We're trying to combat that one more time this week. Um, go sign up if you want to. If you want to get the content, if you want to be in the know, if you want to be that cool person at the water cooler at work, you know, like, oh, yeah, well, I know this. And my sources tell you, you can be on OU Insider. You can also talk to all the OU fans. Start your own threads. That's always fun. Ask Parker and I questions daily. We answer them daily, always on the message board, trying to help you guys out and keep you guys the most informed you can on all OU athletics and recruiting. Again, kickoff 2024, all caps will get you OU Insider for one year. Or you can email us if you have a .edu, .edu, and you're a college student, email us OUinsider at rivals.com, and we will send you a promo code to get OU Insider for a whole year. One-time payment, $11.95. All right, that's going to do it. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and like, no matter where you're at, podcast, whatever. For Parker Thune, my name is Brandon Drum. You guys have a blessed day.